Hi everyone. One of the most common questions that I get as a personal finance coach who runs their business online is, Hi coach, I have an X amount of money, whether that's 50,000, 100, 20,000. What kind of a business would you recommend I start? Either as a full-time business or as a side hustle. And if I'm to be very honest with you, I really don't enjoy answering that question. I don't necessarily even answer it the as most people would expect that I will answer it because the truth of the matter is that there is no one straightforward answer to that kind of a question. Now, in today's episode, I would like to take a few minutes to guide you on a better way to ask that question because I think that that is the wrong question to ask especially if you're intentional on generating additional streams of income. I'd like to talk to you about a checklist that you can actually work with so that you can be able to actually be, um, you know, informed on how to identify, how to choose, and how to actually monetize a business idea or a side hustle that you have had in mind. As per usual, I'm your host, Coach Susan. Welcome back to another episode of Finance Friday. before I give you the checklist that you should use to identify what kind of a business to monetize, I think I need to start explaining um, why you should never start by asking other people what kind of a business you should start. Now, I do get that bouncing off ideas from other people can be very, um, you know, it's encouraged and you feel like getting different um, ideas and getting different mindsets and suggestions from other people is helping you but i'll be very honest with you most of the time it doesn't work very well for you and i'll tell you why people have very unique skills people have very unique um, personalities people have very unique uh, giftings and sometimes another person's suggestion of what uh, you should do for additional income or what you should do for business while it may be very well intentioned it might actually end up not working um, for you. All right. So that's the first thing. Like we are not all the same and what works for me may not work for you. So for example, if I'm biased to, uh, let's say the area of coaching, consulting, selling digital courses and products, um, because this business idea has worked very well for me, let's assume someone else comes and asks me, coach, what do you think uh, I should start with this 50,000 or this 100,000? Because I'm very biased to what has worked for me. I might recommend that you actually go and start a coaching or a consulting business. And because you probably do not have even the gift for it, the skill for it, the desire and the resilience that it takes to run that kind of a business, it might not work very well for you. So even as much as you're bouncing off ideas from other people, you need to recognize that human beings are very different and what may work for you may not work for me. I think another thing that we ignore when we are asking other people, so let's say your friend has gotten into importing or maybe they have gotten into um, selling thrift clothes or um, you know maybe even starting a food business. You might ask them and they might tell you to actually get into that business, but then you've not considered if you guys have the same, um, let's say, risk appetite because businesses, different businesses have risk appetite. You don't know whether that person even has financial backing either from savings, from parents, from relatives, from a loan, from some facility that they have had. And so we are not all the same. You may not have the same risk appetite. You may not be working with the same number of timeline. You may not even be working with the same number of um, privileges. So it is very, very important to ensure that before you even start asking other people or looking at what people are doing online and automatically deciding, oh, you know, person X is doing this business. So I let me just do it because it's giving people money. That's a very flawed way of thinking. I've always said just because a certain business is giving certain people money does not automatically mean that if you get into the business because apparently it is hot and recommended that it is going to work for you. So now guys that we've gotten that out of the way, I would like to actually give you a checklist of some of the things you should do, a proper checklist and a proper procedure of identifying a side hustle that you can start or a, a business idea that you can actually monetize. So stick around to find out what that checklist is. So 
If you're ready and you're intentional to start identifying a business or a side hustle idea that you can monetize, whether you have the money ready yet or not, before you sink money into anything, you need to do these four things. Number one, you need to start with a journey or an activity of self-awareness and introspection. Now, this is one of the reasons why I do not necessarily like to answer this question on the go. And this is because we live in an interesting generation. And guys, this might sound like I'm coming for some of us, but really I'm not. I'm just kind of like challenging you to start thinking differently. We, we live in an interesting generation, guys, right? Where we prioritize um, entertainment over education, Right. We also live in a very interesting generation where we pretty much, and I'm going to just say it um, straight, we pretty much know everything about everyone else, but we don't know stuff about ourselves. So we know who's dating who, we know who bought which new car, we know even who's in whose bed. I mean, things that we're not even supposed to know, <laughs> right? We know all of these things. But let me tell you, if you want to put or rather to put someone in an interesting fix or just push them in a corner, ask them, where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Now that's the most difficult question anyone has to answer. When you ask someone, what are your skills, your, your expertise? What are you good at? What are you trained in? Most of us start fumbling with that um, idea. Um, we, we all of a sudden don't know. Um, and, and one of the things I always recommend, if you want to start that journey to self-awareness, the first thing that you actually want to pay attention to is to conducting a SWOT analysis. Now, what is a SWOT analysis? A SWOT or a, rather a personal SWOT analysis is a, a, a very short activity you can even do on your notebook or on your journal where you find out. This is an acronym that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. That's where I would start. If I want to start, I mean, I'm not just starting a business as a hobby. I want this business to start, uh, you know, creating additional income for me. I want it to be so sustainable that it could probably even replace my, uh, let's say, my eight to five, right? So this is something I'm taking seriously. So I must understand what are my strengths. Strengths are your skills, whether you learned them in school or you've learned them from experience, Okay. Uh, strengths are also your gifts, your talents, things that you're a natural at. Identify what those things are. Then let's talk about your weaknesses. Okay, things that you're poor at. Maybe you're not very good with numbers. Maybe you're not very good with finances. Maybe you're, you're very shy and you don't know how to speak in front of people. Maybe you struggle with confidence. Maybe you don't even know how to sell. Like you can't convince anyone to buy anything. Identify what those things are. Opportunities. One of the most important questions to ask under opportunities is what are opportunities that are available to someone with my strengths or someone with my skill set and my talents? So you see, you're not just identifying what your strengths are for the fun of it. You're asking now, for example, for me, for someone who's a good orator, a powerful speaker, someone who has... Um, experience maybe in finance, someone with a, uh, let's say like a, maybe one of my strengths is that I've been able to build like, let's say a, a, a good social media uh, presence. So I, I would sit down and ask myself if I wanted to find out what other businesses, in addition to what I already do that I can embark on, I would want to now find out what are the opportunities available to someone who has these things in their um, you know, in their, in, their, in their war chest. What are the opportunities available for someone with my strengths, with my skill set, with my talent and my giftings? And then finally, T, that stands for threats. What are some of the threats I face? So maybe some of these threats could be, let's say, financial trouble, maybe lack of support from friends and family, um, or a lack of confidence in yourself. All of these things that you feel, yes, I might embark in, on this journey, but these are some of the threats that I particularly um, face. Now, if you find that you're having a hard time identifying these things, and I'll be very honest with you, especially when it comes to your strengths, and I'll tell you why strengths are very hard to identify. You see a lot of us struggle with confidence issues. We struggle with esteem issues. We struggle with um, maybe you grew up being torn down either by your friends, by your family, by teachers in school. So sometimes um, 
you may be very good at something, but because you're not so confident in, in yourself, you, you may not ideally be able to identify what your strengths are without the help of, let's say, other people, which is why it is very, very important. At the particular point, you're doing your SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and you find that you're struggling to find anything. Because let me tell you guys, I have spoken to so many people, and again, that's why I say this is the saddest thing about our current generation, is that so many of us think we, we are not good at anything. Like, you know, I ask someone, when someone comes to me and they want to start a new business, I'm like, can we talk about what you're good at? And some of you will literally tell me that I'm not good at anything. I do not believe that there are people who are not good at anything at all. You might have some self-limiting beliefs that you inflicted upon yourself or were inflicted upon you by maybe like guardians, parents, teachers. And which is why if I was stuck in this particular place, I would actually go to a trusted friend. The key word here being trusted, okay? A trusted friend or a trusted family member and then have that um, activity with them, okay? Ask them, by the way, what do you think I'm good at? What do you think I do so well? Um, what do you think I, you know, I'm, I'm doing very good at, all right? So that is one of the things that I would say is very, very important. So your sort analysis and going through a process of self-introspection is one of the most important things to figure out. Again, this is before you choose any business or side hustle idea. This is before you sink your money into anything. Figure out if this thing is in alignment with your strengths, um, if you're aware of your weaknesses and all of that. Just as a, um, something that I need to say real quick here is that you're identifying your strengths so that you can be able to maximize on them. And you're also identifying your weaknesses so that you can start working on them. Your weaknesses should not ideally define you. Now, self-awareness is the superpower. That's the secret ingredient that will be able to now take you to step number two. Now, the second thing that you need to do after you've done a, um, an activity around self-awareness and introspection to know what you have in your watches, the second thing that you must do is to audit what can and cannot be monetized. Now, while some people may struggle with knowing what they are good at, I've met some very lucky people who have too many ideas in the first place. So you're good with dancing, you're good with writing, you've started a bug business and it was doing well. Now you want to even get into shoes and you want to do all of these things, right? Um, the truth of the matter is that not every skill, not every gift, not every talent that you have can be monetized. And this is now where we narrow down your list, guys. All right? How do you know what can be monetized and what cannot be monetized? The truth is that some skills and some gifts you, you have may not necessarily align with current market demands. So even if you started the business, because there's no demand for that uh, particular thing, you might not uh, do as well, okay? Some of them may not even be practical yet or scalable, and some of them may just simply be better suited for like personal enjoyment and just for your own um, hobbies, okay? So what qualifies as a skill or as a gift or as a talent that you can monetize? Number one, it has to be something that has market demand. On this channel, so many times I talk to you guys about acquiring demand-driven skills. I'll give you an example. Social media is now becoming such an amazing platform to make money. And some years ago, it wasn't a, a very, like it wasn't one of the, um, you know, best avenues or a very popular avenue of making money. Now, while people are trolling on social media and consuming on social media, there are people who on a daily basis are making bank. I mean, people have even been able to build multi-million dollar businesses on social media. Now, if I was paying attention to what is happening in the world, to what is happening in the market, I would definitely look into, again, gaining a demand-driven skill that can help me maneuver social media better or understand how I can make money um, on social media. So how you, you want to evaluate that your skill, your gifting um, is something that can be monetized, there needs to be a demand for this thing. Are we together, guys? And then now, if the talent or the savvy, or rather, if the talent or the skill that you have cannot be broken down into either a service or a product, 
guys, I'll be very honest with you. It's probably something that you need to live in that pool of talents. We said there are some gifts, there are some talents, there are some skills that you're good at that we are going to live in the fun. Uh, we have two baskets. We have, um, we can monetize this basket and we have, uh, this is just a hobby basket. So if you try, look at these things, seven different ways from Sunday. Okay. And you realize that I can't, I can't necessarily pinpoint what kind of a product I would turn this into or what kind of a service I can turn this into. That might be one of the signs or in symptoms that that particular talent or gift or skill cannot necessarily be monetized. So if you want a checklist, okay, once you've been able to do your sort analysis, you might want to now separate what can and cannot be monetized. And the easiest way to do that, as I've said, is to identify A, is there a market for this thing? Can it be grown and scaled into something that is sustainable in the medium term or even in the long term? And number three, is it so clear what your service or your product will be? Is it so clear who your target market will be? Is it so clear where an ideal starting point is? Okay, so ensure that you do that um, activity to remove what cannot be monet monetized and now start working with what can be monetized. Now, at this particular point, because we've done quite a bit of elimination, we started with looking at um, your skills, your SWOT analysis, and then we've even separated the wheat from the shaft. We've been, you know, like this one is just hobbies and talents. No need to try and monetize this. And then we've probably now come down to maybe two or three ideas that you can now monetize. Now, guys, this step number one and step number two is one of the reasons people don't like me when they come with the question that we asked when we started today's video. I have 50,000 shillings. What can I start with this business? This is one of the reasons the journey is very hard for some of us because we want a stranger who doesn't know us to make this decision for us, right? We want quick fixes. We want something that we can start tomorrow. We want something that we can start the day after tomorrow. We want something that we can implement this month. And sometimes um, some of the sus most sustainable um, businesses have actually been built on that level of like they, 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 they have been built and they have succeeded because of that uniqueness of the founder, the fact that it is so uniquely tailored to their gifts, their talents. So what I'm just trying to say is even before we get into step number three, I need you to understand that step number one and step number two are super, super crucial. And even if they take more time, they might take you weeks, they might take you months. You would rather take the few weeks or the few months to figure you out, to figure yourself out, to get, as I told you guys, self-awareness is a superpower. I feel like self-awareness makes me money. And I'll tell you why it makes me money, because I can look at a venture and just know immediately that this is not for me. There's no need for me to put in time, money, or even any resources into this thing. It's not going to work for me because I know Susan. I know what she can and cannot do. So in the same way, prioritize these first two steps just so that you're not wasting so much time, so much money, and pouring so much resources in things that are going to be futile. And this is why so many of us have a very long uh, track record of trying things, failing. It's like you're a serial business starter. You pretty much just start businesses and start businesses and close and start and close. Um, and that's not how it should be. Okay. Now, Let's get into step number three in our checklist, and that is researching on what is needed to monetize this idea. So we are hoping that at this particular point, you've narrowed down to one or two ideas. Now, guys, if you've already gotten to this part of the video and you know that I have an idea, I want to start a boutique. I want to start a food business. I want to start importing. I want to start counseling and therapy. Let's assume you, you have the idea. It's very clear to you. At this point, the most important question to ask yourself is what does it take to be successful at this thing? Say I want to become a coach. What does it take to become a successful coach here in Kenya? Say I want to be a renowned photographer or videographer. Ask yourself, what does it take? to become a renowned photographer or videographer in Kenya. Say you want to do animation for movies. What does it take to be a good, you know, someone who does animation? Ask yourself, do I have the resources that I need 
to run this kind of a business. And now, I want to have a very important conversation uh, with you guys. Again, because we talk a lot about money on this channel and money is a big reason as to why most people come to me and they tell me, coach, if only I had capital, I have this brilliant idea, but I don't have capital. I can't buy my cameras. I can't, let's say you want to get into content creation or you're saying I can't import those tacky clothes that I want to sell. Guys, can I just break it down to you? You know, I'm always honest with you on this channel. For some of you, money is the least of your worries. As a matter of fact, the resources you will need are more than just money. Money is not the only thing that it takes to be successful at a side hustle. Money is not the only thing that you need to be successful at a business that you're starting. And I've, 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 I've said this so many times, and I think for some of us, we just don't believe it. So let me prove it to you using myself as an example, okay? When I decided that I was going to become um, a personal finance coach, in fact, even before I narrowed down, to personal finance coach, I just wanted to become a coach. So the first certificate that I did was a life coaching certification. And then eventually I got like a business coaching certification, but that's a story for another day. I want to show you how money in this case was the list of my worries. Now, there are two things I had going very well for me. Okay. Number one, as I told you guys, I love talking. I love empowering and impacting people. That is something that is a natural God-given um, gift or desire that I have had since I was a very young girl. And that was very evident from the fact that I was always like in leadership in school, always in leadership in church. I've, I was always the girl in the friends group who anyone can, can come with, with, um, you know, their own personal issues. And people would say, gosh, after speaking to you, I felt so good. You gave me direction, whatnot. That was just like on a friendship low level, um, kind of like place. Right. So I had my personality and my confidence going for me. The other thing I had going for me was the fact that um, I did a bachelor um, in finance and economics and worked in an investment company. I was doing an investment analysis um, certification. So there was that working for me. Now, had I just taken the fact that I can talk <laughs> um, with people and the fact that I have, um, uh, let's say, finance knowledge and say, oh, I have enough to start the business. I don't think I'd have been able to get this far now. If I had all of these things working for me, but I didn't have things that were so, so important. So number one, I, if I wanted to get into coaching, one of the things that was very clear that I needed was a coaching certification. Let me tell you, kupayo katuna kweza kuonge is not, it's not how you become a coach. People have different personalities. People learn differently. So I needed to get a coaching certification that would give me the basic tools of how to coach introverts extroverts, how to work with people who are self-driven, how to work with people who need extra pushing and, you know, extra motivation. So I got a, um, a coaching certification for that. Now, something else I realized very quickly that I needed to get is the ability to sell. Guys, listen and listen to me very well. I meet so many business people that, or rather so many people who want to get into business that do not want to sell. guys. How is it that you want to start a business? You want to sell bags, you want to sell shoes, you want to sell your services, but you are afraid of talking about your product. So you don't want to post on your WhatsApp status, you don't want to post your shoes, you don't want to post your cakes, you don't want to post your samosas, you don't want to post your meal prep services on social media or even talk about it. In fact, there was a client I talked to the other day who was telling me that they are so afraid of selling because they think people will think that if they are overselling, maybe they are broke. And I'm like, do I need to remind you guys? What do I keep saying? That people's opinions do not pay your bills. But let's go back. So I had to actually learn how to sell. You cannot sell if you don't sell. You can be in business if you're not a salesperson. And never ever. In fact, one of the other ingredients that you need in selling is shamelessness. If you guys are, um, you know, you subscribe to some of these things like Jumia or um, Glovo, these people are pretty much spamming us. I probably get like seven Glovo notifications every day. This offer, 10% on Uber Eats, the other one, the other one. Like if big companies are spamming us with their products and services, Sembuse Mimi as a small business owner, 
right? So I had to learn the art of storytelling, the art of curating and convincing uh, people to buy my coaching products and my coaching services. I had to learn the power of personal branding. Before, I never used to think that my social media platform is important. I never used to think that um, my image is important. I never used to think that what I'm posting on social media is important, but I needed to learn the power of personal branding because now, because I was able to get some classes on the University of YouTube and sign up for some courses, I understood the power of personal branding. And now the Legacy Hub Kenya as a company makes me money, but also Susan Wanjiko as a brand makes me money. Why? Because when I did personal branding, I started getting speaking engagements, training gigs with companies, showing up in panel discussions and get paid for it, right? I had to also um, learn how to do basic accounting and bookkeeping for the business. I had to learn how to strategize and plan for the business. I literally had to learn the power of storytelling and how that can help me in, my, in marketing my skills, marketing my um, services and marketing my products. Now, had you given me money, right? And told me, Susan, go start a coaching business. And I didn't have all of these skills that I've mentioned. I don't think that my business would have been as successful as it is today. I don't think I would have gotten the reach that I have gotten. So for some of you, you're looking at um, this business idea and you think that all you need is money. Uh-uh. No. You need to ask yourself, do I have the resources? Do I have the soft skills? Have I upskilled? Have I gotten all the necessary resources to ensure that once I now decide to put my time, my money and my energy in this business, I am also equipped and empowered with other skills, like as I mentioned, accounting, sales, money management, being able to use social media, all of these things. Am I empowered or equipped with these resources because they will also support? If you just have money, all you will do is that you'll keep sinking um, money in businesses or inside hustles that you're not even empowered to maintain for the long term. All right. And you will keep going back to the drain board. You will start seven different businesses and all of them will just either be mediocre or they will fail. Right. Because you did not ask yourself this very important question. What are the resources that I need to be successful at this business? Do I have the skills? Do I have what it takes? Have I acquired or empowered myself with the skills that are needed to be successful in this particular um, business? So I just spoke about the importance of upskilling as one of the things that would really, really equip you in case you want to become um, a good business owner and someone who's successful at starting side hustles. Remember, we are talking about how you can monetize your gifts, your skills, um, and things that you feel you're super talented in. Now, you're probably wondering, where exactly do I start? Now, as per usual, your girl always got you. I want to plug you on to Skillshare. I'm currently on the Skillshare platform right now. And in case you did not know what Skillshare is, it is the largest online learning platform for creatives. I've personally been spending a bit of time on Skillshare. I'm currently just honing in on my skills for brand and storytelling. I've really been enjoying this course. I just started it a few days ago and I really, really love all the information that I'm getting as to how I can build emotional connections with my customer one of the most exciting parts of this is that i'm already seeing that there's gonna be a lot of case studies of successful businesses that have done that from apple i've seen subaru i've seen dav and this is a very very exciting journey again i told you guys that um this is one of the things i discovered i really need to hone in on if i'm gonna be successful at selling my coaching products if i'm gonna be successful at um selling my digital products now now, maybe that's not your line, but you're probably interested in other areas. I love that Skillshare actually have designed learning paths, as you can see. So there are quite a number of different learning paths that you can actually explore. If you'd like to learn how to play the guitar, if you want to learn how to do your first publishing of a book, if you actually want to know how to price and sell your own products, if you want to learn about video editing, Listen, guys, the wealth of information on Skillshare, to be honest, is 
it's amazing it's actually mind blowing and i'd like you guys to get onto this immediately because there's there's so much to learn um it's on demand learning that is also something you guys know i'm passionate about so there's absolutely no pressure it just you can learn at your own time, at your own pace. Um, you can explore. I, I love that the skills that you can learn on here are quite, quite um, variable. And it's very, very interesting. It's a very, very interesting learning platform. Now, I told you guys I got you, right? Um, the first 500 people to click on the link that I'm going to leave down below are actually going to get the first one month of Skillshare subscription for free, okay? So if you're interested in learning, if you're interested in exploring, if you want to just kind of like get a feel of using Skillshare for the next one month, please do not, don't delay. Just um, hit the link uh, in the description box down below and the first 500 people to use that link are actually going to get a skillshare subscription for free so please don't say i didn't plug you run and get it done right now um i'd like to take this opportunity to thank skillshare for sponsoring today's video so the last step that you need we've already done so much so far step number one just to recap we talked about self-awareness Step number two, we talked about auditing what can and cannot be monetized. And step number three, which is very important, is researching on what is needed to be successful. So how can you monetize that idea? What extra skills might you need so that you can be successful in that particular business venture? Now, if you've already gotten to this point, you're probably ready to start the business and you've gone about it the right way. So the last and one of the most important steps is to identify what your marketing strategy will be. There is no such thing as a business without marketing. Marketing could come in so many ways. Referrals, for example. Like when I started my business, um, one of before I, you know, became like um before I started like doing things on YouTube and on Instagram, most of the clients that would work with me were referrals. So a lady came to my class, she was impressed, she brought her sister and then the sister brought her friend and so on and so forth. However, if you want to scale, word of mouth is not enough. So you might want to start thinking, do I want, uh, let's say, for example, to build a website for my business so that, and guys, websites are so, so important. Maybe we can talk about that in another video because I've met companies uh, or people who wanted to hire me in companies that didn't take me seriously because I didn't even have a website so my company did not look very professional it didn't look legit to other people um so you want to think about whether is it important to build like a website for the business is it important to build an e-commerce platform for the business is it important to um be on social media uh for the purpose of that business um if you're going to start let's say a shop what is the location? Are you going to be in town? Are you going to be in Roisambo? Are you going to be in whichever area? You need to decide what your marketing strategy uh, will be. Why are we marketing? Because people will not know that you do what you do or that you offer this amazing product or service that you do if you don't let them know. Okay? So we said, you, you remember, selling is non-negotiable. So your marketing strategy or your advertising strategy is probably going to go hand in hand you with you understanding and learning how to package yourself, how to package your products and services, and how to sell them. And selling is not just telling someone, oh, this is a glass, buy it. It's all about like um, knowing how you can curate a story or curate an adver uh, advertising copy or take very good photos. I mean, I always encourage product-based businesses, please work with a photographer. And sure, you see, if I take photos with my phone, for let's say some handbags I'm doing. They might look basic. They might not look very enticing, but if you get a product photographer to help you, there's props and it looks nice. It looks like it looks clean and crisp and it looks attractive, especially if you're going to be selling on social media. Social media is vanity metrics are important. People want to see shiny objects that look nice. So you might want to invest in that. All of these things really um, is to really, really say that you can't just start a business and be quiet about it. So you need 
to really, really talk about it. So one of the easiest and the fastest way to promote your business, guys, and this is like almost free other than the fact that you will need a good phone and bundles is to actually use social media. Social media is free. It is accessible. We are already spending uh, six hours on there for tea and to find out who's sleeping with who and who's dating who and who broke up with who and all of that stuff. So guys, if you are not, <laughs> um, if, if you're just consuming on social media, social media and you're not producing, you're not min making any money, I read somewhere that you are the product. You are the one, you're the one we are actually selling. So please make sure that if you want to actually um, get into any type of side hustling and get into any type of business, social media and having a powerful or a strong personal brand or a strong business brand is one of the assets that you need to have working out for you. Now, I'm going to stop there, but if you want to find out how you can use social media to make money. I need you to pause right now and please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload next week's video because next week I want to take some time and break it down for you exactly the strategy that I used uh, to start making money on social media and to start using my Instagram platform, my TikTok platform and my YouTube platform to start making money. Please let me know if this video was helpful and insightful for you. In case you have any questions, you know what to do. And also remember to share this video with your friends so that they can also learn this checklist that we've learned today of how you can actually step by step make a very informed decision on what kind of a side hustle or what kind of a business idea you can monetize. Thank you so much for watching. And again, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'll see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.